The film starts with the location of a young fellow en route to work out of nowhere going visually impaired in a rush hour gridlock stop. At the point when the traffic signal becomes green and the man can't move his vehicle, the vehicles behind him start sounding at him more than once. Before long some concerned city inhabitants approach the man and discover that he has lost his vision. A decent Samaritan named X proposals to drive the man home and assist with clearing the traffic. As they head to his condo, the visually impaired man portrays his unexpected burden as a scope of amazing white like he is, swimming in milk. Ultimately they show up at the visually impaired man's upscale condo. In any case, when the visually impaired man escapes his vehicle, the hero escapes with the visually impaired man's vehicle. Afterward, the visually impaired man's better half gets back and is stunned to find out about her significant other's condition. She quickly chooses to take him to a neighborhood ophthalmologist. The specialist carries out an intensive assessment of the man's eyes yet neglects to track down the justification behind his unexpected visual deficiency. For most visually impaired individuals everything goes dim however the visually impaired man specifies seeing white. The specialist alludes the man to a clinic. In the meantime, the one who took the visually impaired man's vehicle runs into a police check. Scared of getting found out, he unlawfully switches to another lane and forsakes the vehicle. Nonetheless, before he could move away, the man gets his karma and out of nowhere goes blind like the one who he took from. At home, the specialist educates his significant other regarding the odd ailment. In the wake of having the supper that she makes for him, the specialist keeps awake until late to explore the condition. By the following morning, two additional individuals become casualties of the disease, a nearby whore who generally wears dull glasses and the specialist himself. The specialist's better half attempts to inspect his eyes yet he drives her away, scared of contaminating her with the condition. In any case, she declines his endeavors to avoid her as much as possible and commitments she will be protected. In different areas of the city, a few additional residents are struck visually impaired, causing boundless frenzy. The public authority takes discernment of the circumstance and readies a quarantine office in a neighborhood a neglected refuge. A group wearing hazardous materials suits shows up external the specialist's home to get him. Stressed over him, the specialist's significant other ascensions into the van with him claiming to be heedless to go with him into detachment. The office has been separated into various wards and each ward should choose a ward chief to address them and speak with the rest of the world. The one who wears dull glasses, the principal blind man, the vehicle criminal, and a little fellow join the specialist in his ward. The main visually impaired man rapidly perceives the vehicle hoodlum's voice and a battle breaks out between the two. The specialist splits them up and really accepts the job of the ward skipper. The specialist's significant other shows the visually impaired how to explore in the passageways. More visually impaired individuals join the specialist's ward including the primary visually impaired man's better half. With the quantity of tainted individuals quickly expanding, in a proper method of time, an ever-increasing number of individuals are packed into similar office, far past its ability. The congestion and disregard from the public authority causes the cleanliness and everyday environments in the office to quickly decay. The walls and the floors before long become covered in rottenness and defecation. Individuals become progressively sad. Tension over the accessibility of food, brought about by sporadic conveyances, subverts the contaminated individual's assurance. The warriors who watch the refuge become progressively threatening and the public authority won't permit in fundamental drugs, so a straightforward contamination turns out to be dangerous. At some point, the specialist's better half meets an elderly person with an eye fix in the office. He lives in another ward however requests to move to the specialist's ward. The elderly person has a radio so the specialist's significant other permits him to change wards. The elderly person educates the specialist and others in his ward regarding the things he is familiar with the rest of the world through the radio. He lets them know that the unexpected visual deficiency which is known as the white ailment has spread from one side of the planet to the other, with many cases being accounted for each day. The states all over the planet held endless courses and roundtable discussions on the circumstance yet couldn't track down an answer. Things immediately ran wild and the rest of the world has stopped. At some point, while conveying another cluster of tainted individuals to the office, 
A visually impaired man strays from his gathering and has savagely chanced by the warriors. Alon follows and two others wind up dead in the subsequent charge. The following day, the warriors unfeelingly throw a digging tool over the wall that encompasses the quarantine office and request the contaminated individuals to cover the cadavers of individuals killed a day or two ago. The specialist suggests that they partition the work and each ward covers one body. Individuals of Ward 3 are not satisfied with the thought and they will not assume a sense of ownership with individuals they don't have the foggiest idea. The specialist conflicts with their chief who proclaims himself as the ruler of Ward 3. Throughout the span of the following couple of days, the cheat, who is at this point not ready to walk in light of a contamination, figures out reality with regards to the specialist's significant other. He stands up to her about it and begs her to assist him with getting away so he could get his disease treated. Notwithstanding, the specialist's significant other excuses him and enlightens him that he is off base concerning her. Tired of sitting tight for treatment, the cheat endeavors to escape the office that evening however winds up having chance dead. The specialist's better half feels she is liable for the criminal's passing however the specialist tells her that she is now giving her best. At the point when she keeps on demanding that she ought to have confessed about her visual perception, the specialist lashes out with her and tells her that she is as of now behaving like everybody's mom, and she doesn't have to accomplish more. The Lord of Ward 3 and his men hold everybody at gunpoint and assume command of the food that the public authority conveys. He arranges everybody to surrender their significant belongings to him in return for proportions. The tainted hesitantly give up their resources with which they had wistful qualities connected in return for food which is way short of what they used to get previously. Besides, because of disappointment of being not able to deal with himself and a sensation of powerlessness, the specialist and his significant other keep on floating separated. Subsequent to finding the specialist steamed, the lady with the dull glasses solaces him and attempts to encourage him. One thing prompts another and the specialist and the lady end have having intercourse. Both quickly think twice about it considerably more so when they understand that the specialist's better half seen their whole tryst. The lady apologizes to his significant other and finds out about her vision. The following day, the Lord of Ward 3 requests ladies in return for food. Individuals will not go along and three days cruise by. The specialist significant other asks the fighters outside for food however they tell her that they have proactively gotten nourishment for the weak and the obligation of conveyance is exclusively on individuals inside. Frantic for food, individuals start discussing whether they ought to follow the Ward 3's requests. They ask the specialist for exhortation. He lets them know that he is in no spot to direct them and requests that they do anything they want to do. Individually, the ladies volunteer to be sex slaves for the men in the Ward 3, and the Lord of Ward 3 powers himself on the specialist's significant other. One of the ladies is severely pounded into the ground by her victimizer. The following day, the Ward 3 men take the ladies of Ward 2. A Ward 3 man insults the specialist's better half coming back, which makes her snap. She takes a scissor to Ward 3 and murders their chief. She gladly gloats to the Ward 3 men that they will always be unable to know what her identity is prior to leaving with the ladies. She informs her significant other regarding the vengeance yet he could think often less about it. He is more stressed over the conceivable conflict. Individuals of Ward 1 and 2 find out about the death of the ruler of Ward 3 and develop stressed over a reprisal. In the interim, they blockade their wall expecting a potential conflict. The gathering then, at that point, talks about surrendering the individual who killed the head of Ward 3. Hearing this, the specialist's better half nearly surrenders herself however she is intruded on by the radio man, bred to all wards, and mayhem results. Everybody heads outside and the specialist's better half shouts to the watchman yet figures out that nobody is there. She then, at that point, figures out that the entryways are opened and everybody at last leaves the spot. As they stroll around the city, they notice how far society has fallen and witness the annihilation around them. Blind individuals meander the roads and everything looks bleak. In the end, the specialist and his better half head out to rescue supplies. The specialist has a go at let his significant other know that he misses her yet she stays cold and overlooks his feelings. The spouse then enters a grocery store yet observes that every one of the racks are vacant and individuals are going distrustful with hunger. 
She then, at that point, dares to the cellar and finds an enormous pile of food that she hadn't even longed for since ages. She gathers two sacks of provisions and goes higher up. Nonetheless, the craving-stricken individuals sense that she has something and promptly assault her. The specialist who was holding up at the entryway, races to help her and the couple take off. After they arrive at a protected spot, the specialist understands that he abandoned his garments at the grocery store so he gets back to get them back. The drained spouse sits and looks on as a bunch of canines eat a dead man. Out of nowhere, a canine stops by and gives her organization. It begins coming down so she gets inside and the canine follows her. The specialist additionally shows up with the garments and subsequent to wearing coats, they head back to their place. Outside, individuals partake in the downpour and are seen celebrating in the experience, regardless of whether it's for a brief period. The next day, the specialist's better half takes the gathering to their home. Luckily, nobody had attacked their home and it looks flawless. She then tidies up the untidy spot to cause everybody to feel at ease. There, everybody is seen helping each other as though they are one major family. The three ladies later wash up where they are giggling and partaking in the experience. The specialist's significant other portrays the ladies to them as they haven't seen themselves in that frame of mind while. Sometime thereafter, the radio man communicates his bliss on the way that he has met a great deal of good individuals during these crucial times. He additionally go on by saying that they can live respectively like this for quite a while. During supper, the specialist's significant other happily portrays the things and their areas on the table and the gathering has an abnormal cheer, which they giggle at. That evening, the specialist and his significant other at last have intercourse and he makes sense of the amount he cherishes her. The next morning, the specialist's significant other gets up right on time and makes her exceptional espresso for everybody. Unexpectedly, the principal man begins seeing everything around him. Blended in with sensations of shock and satisfaction, he shouts that everything is extremely gorgeous. He then circumvents the house, welcoming everybody with bliss. Everybody is incredibly cheerful at the new disclosure, imagining that it's inevitable before their sight is back also. Buy in for additional recordings like this, turn on the warning, and pass on a like to take care of the feed. Gratitude for watching.